I'm Steve Reinhardt. If you have questions about intellectual property, bad law, or domain name disputes after watching this video, give me a call, 801-347-5173, or visit me online, www.uspatentlaw.us. Watching this video, you have questions about patents, and I am here to help educate you, to help you understand the difference between the different types of patent applications that exist before the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. My name is Steve Reinhardt. And I am a registered patent attorney. I am licensed by the state of Utah to practice law as well as by the Commonwealth of Virginia. And I want to help clarify some common misconceptions about the patent process and help you understand it if you're considering going forward. It is a common misconception on the part of inventors that you can patent only a machine or an apparatus or a device. You can, in fact, patent anything you have invented under the sun, including systems of inner working components, software, the features that a software program performs. You can even patent methods of doing, realizing, or accomplishing almost anything, including methods of conducting business. I have seen patents on methods of hearing the hiccups, methods of killing someone with your bare hands. Now, recent decisions by the U.S. Supreme Court, like in Ray Belsky, make these types of method patents more difficult to get, but a clever patent attorney can still help you if you have a true unique method of accomplishing almost anything. There are many types of patent applications, and inventors often get confused about which type of patent application they need to file. They even often find that the advice of a patent attorney or a patent agent is unhelpful. I hate to say it, but it is true that sometimes you cannot trust the patent attorney or agent completely. They sometimes have their own agenda. It's easier for them to file, prosecute, and pursue certain types of patent applications. They may steer you towards a provisional patent application only so they can charge you for the non-provisional in a year. Now, I want to tell you about the basics, the differences between the types of patent applications so that you have some knowledge when you approach a patent attorney about what you need. And if you want to approach my office, we can be found online at utahpatentattorneys.com or you can call me at 801-347-5173 for more information. Now, the types of patent applications that exist before the patent office, as I mentioned, are numerous. They include provisional patent applications, non-provisional patent applications, plant patents, design patent applications, PCT patent applications, and there are others which are less concerned to inventors, re-exam, reissue, continuation, and part. These are all different types of patent applications. Which one do you need? Well, beginning at the top, a provisional patent application is good for one year. It protects any, uh, anything, any idea you have, any concept you've come up with for a short period of time. Within a year, that provisional patent application has to be renewed or converted to a non-provisional patent application. I, unlike other attorneys that I know, try to steer clients away from provisional patent applications. Although they're cheaper to prepare, they don't usually give you the protection that you think you're getting. And within a year, you have to pay more money to convert them to a non-provisional. Why not start off with a non-provisional to begin with? Well, a non-provisional patent application is good for 20 years from the filing date. Sometimes you can get a patent term adjustment that adds a few days to that if it takes too long to push the application through the patent office. Now, a non-provisional patent application covers, as I mentioned before, devices, apparatus, or apparatuses. Uh, but also systems, methods, software. Any device that you've invented which serves a utilitarian or useful purpose should be protected with a non-provisional patent application. They're more expensive to prepare and file. They're longer than a provisional, and they're longer than the other types of patent applications. But oftentimes, they're the most useful, most valuable, most beneficial to inventors. You need to be aware that there are also design patent applications design patents. These are good for 14 years from the filing date. They cover the way something looks. They cover an ornamental design only. If you invented a device that's strictly functional, that serves strictly a utilitarian purpose, you shouldn't file a design patent application, and you shouldn't let a patent attorney steer you into one. Steer you into it believing that you're getting a patent that's easy for him to push through the patent office, and that's giving you some sort of protection. In fact, the protection will be illusionary. It protects only the way it looks. Now, instances where you may want a design patent, if you've protected, invented something that truly uh, 
looks good. It has an appealing design. For instance, Reebok files design patents on their shoes. If they had invented the shoe, uh, they would file a non-provisional patent, which would protect the shoe itself. Now, GM files design patents on their cars. Oakley files them on their sunglasses. These design patents protect the way those specific embodiments of that device look, but not what the device does. Inventors in the United States, and in most countries in the world, can file PCT patent applications. These are international patent applications. The filing fees are expensive. Depending on whether you want a search report and some of these other things, the filing fees right now are a little over $4,000. If you've done a U.S. patent application prior to filing a PCT patent application, the attorney's fees should not be much. The U.S. application can be converted, reformatted to conform with the requirements, the PCT application requirements. This involves getting rid of the paragraph numbers, adding line numbers, changing the page dimensions, and doing a few other miscellaneous things. But through the PCT patent application process, you can end up with a patent in almost any country in the world. Notable exceptions include most of the Middle East, Taiwan, and various others. There are a lot of rules concerning PCT patent applications. Some of that is beyond the scope of this video. But I may post another video about PCT applications specifically. There are also plant patent applications. This is, these applications apply only to a very specific cross-segment of inventors and inventions. If you're in agriculture, uh, you probably know what these are. If you invent a plant, if you graft the branch of one apple tree onto another, uh, you do something unique in that field of commerce, you may be interested in plant patent applications. They're filed in, co in color, unlike other patent applications, the drawings are in color. And it is common uh, for attorneys to advise inventors to first file a provisional patent application and then to follow it up with a non-provisional. I avoid this unless there is some sort of pressing deadline. Uh, my office generally will prepare non-provisional patent applications for less than $6,000. The provisional will cost you two to 3000 and you'll have to pay extra later. We can answer any questions you've got about these types of patent applications. It is true that the patents are generally pending, particularly non-provisional patents, for between two and four years, sometimes even longer than that. During the time that these applications are pending, uh, you have some of the same rights that you have with a patent. Um, there are people who include for, uh, pending patents as assets on company balance sheets, who license them, sell them, sign them, mortgage them. You cannot sue someone for patent infringement of a pending patent or a pending patent application. You, if you think someone is copying the idea, have to file a petition to make special with the patent office. Try to move the pending application into issued status quickly, after which time you can sue. Um, there are other types of patent applications. When you amend a patent application and add new matter to it, you need to file what's called a continuation in part application. You end up with a patent application that has two priority dates or more. There are re-exams. Re there are reissues. These patent applications are uh, not applications that concern inventors seeking patent protection in the initial phases of the invention process or the inventing uh, process, the development process. And again, if you have questions, please give my office a call. We can help you no matter where in the U.S. or in the world, really, that you reside, if you're interested in the U.S. application. The website's utahpatentattorneys.com, and you can reach me at 801-347-5173.